Hey guys, my name is Aspire and today I'm going to be taking a look on the Ryzen 3 1300X. Now the Ryzen 3 1300X is a CPU made by AMD and was released last year on July 27, 2017. The Ryzen 3 processor is a true quad-core unlocked performance for responsive gaming and computing. The specifications of the Ryzen 3 1300X is 4 cores, has 4 threads, a base clock at 3.5 GHz but my CPU is clocked at 3.50 GHz so no problem for me. Total L3 caches of 8 MB has no integrated graphics card which is bad for me. Of course you could take the Ryzen 3 2200G, I guess it has the onboard Vega graphics which is good which costs $99 which is not bad. It works on aim for motherboards like A320 which is not overclockable, the B350 slight capable of overclocking, and the X370 capable of overclocking. The good part of the Ryzen 3 is that you can actually overclock to the maximum potential like the Ryzen 5 and the Ryzen 7. But of course like Intel from the older versions from like Pentiums or older i3s like i3-7100, it could not overclock to the max potential and it's not overclockable as well. But new Intel CPUs like i3, AD350K and more can be overclockable. Now today I'm gonna be pairing my Ryzen 3 1300X with a B350 MA motherboard from Asus, a GDX 1050 2GB from Asus, and two sticks of 4GB DDR4 2400 RAM from G-Skill, and a 550W power supply, and see how can the Ryzen 3 performs modern title games in 2018. Now we first have CSGO on the highest settings in 1080p, an anti pick filter on 16. And we scored an average of 161 FPS, the minimum downs of 94 FPS, and the max of 214 FPS. I call this playable even though we started losing this match, which my teammates are bad playing, but still it's playable for me, and to play, I have no problem on this game at all. Next we have Just Cause 3 on the highest settings of the game and 1080p and we got a score of 70 FPS in total, minimums down to 28 FPS and the max of 91 FPS. There was some stutter of the game even though there were explosions, the game is totally playable and no problems happen to the game. Before we continue this video, I want to say that my dad bought me a new monitor. It's very okay, it's very beautiful. Of course, it's from HP, but the problem is that uh, the resolution is 1366 by 768 and I cannot push the resolution to the 1080p, so I'm just gonna stick up to the heavier title games and let's get back right in the video. Next game is GDA 5 on the highest settings 1366 and 768p resolution and we score an average of 90 fps minimums down to 15 fps and a max of 187 fps now the game can handle 1080p but what i said again my dad bought me a better monitor but in 1366x768p but still 1080p can form best in gda5 Going into more demanding games and we have Watch Dogs 2 on the highest settings on 1366 by 768 to get the best FPS as possible and we got 47 FPS from the minimums of 8 which is caused by a stutter and the max of 70 FPS. The game is playable in some time but going to 1080p and higher will lag and stutter more but it's still playable in my experience. And the final game to benchmark is Ghost Recon Wildlands, a game that requires high-end system to run the game on the highest settings but on this Ryzen 3 1300X. We set the game to the lowest settings to get a smooth experience of the game and we got an average of 71 FPS, which is better than what I've seen going down to the minimums of 51 FPS and the max FPS of 98. And it's smooth and playable for gamers out there who wanna play Ghost Recon Wildlands. Well, there is some stutter, uh, which is just rare occasions, but it runs very well. And of course, you can set the game to medium, but you might get more stutter since the game is, is CPU intensive. 
and I recommend the Ryzen 5 1400 or a 1600 to play on medium or high settings. Going to rendering Adobe Premiere Pro, we set the video quality on 1080p, 30 FPS in a 30 second video to get an estimated time of 1 minute and 37 seconds, which is not bad, at least it performs well. Editing is good, no lag at all, even multitasking while using Adobe Premiere didn't have any significant lag and slowdowns to the CPU. In Cinebench, we score 551 on the CPU test, which is good and goes to 6th place behind i7-38 for the QM and in front of the i7-3720 QM, which is perfect. So, should you buy the Ryzen 3 1300X? Well, it costs around $140 in the US, $100 British pounds in the UK, and $7,282 pesos in the Philippines. So yeah, it's the perfect budget CPU for gamers and video editors out there, but if you want more cheaper, you can take the Ryzen 3 2200G, which has onboard Vega graphics or Ryzen 3 1200, which they are cheaper, but if you are a gamer, and you're on a very tight budget, you can take the FX series or the Intel i3-7100 and the Pentium G4560. So thank you so much for watching this video and if you enjoy the review, please do give me a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel for more PC reviews like PC parts builds or PC founds old and cheap. And I'll see you guys in the next video. Goodbye.